Hi everyone, today I'm here with my April wrap up and it's going to be all the books that I read for Magical Readathon and outside of that and I've done pretty well. I'm so pleased. I wrote 10 books in the month of April and that is the biggest amount I've read for a very long time. So I'm really pleased with myself. To be fair, five of them were really short but let's not talk about that too much. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is to tell you what um, obviously what career I went with and what challenges I had to do with which books I completed. I'm gonna tell you the books of the order that I read them. Some of them will be for the challenges, some won't be for the challenges, but it'll hopefully make more sense when I actually get into it. So let's get started. If you watched my TBR for April, you'd know that I chose my career with a random number generator, which worked out pretty well. I had Wild Fair fair world cartographer and I completed all the challenges I'm so pleased so let's go with the books the first book that I finished was The Phone Box at the Edge of the World by Laura Ime Messina and it was for the challenge Elemental Studies for that we had to read a book with flowers on the cover so there are some flowers on here as you can hopefully see this book is a contemporary novel set in Japan and there is a telephone box in a town or a city i think it's a town and so basically people people go there to have a chat with somebody who they've lost so somebody who's dead or potentially lost and they don't know where he is because it is sort of said after a massive tsunami that happened in japan in real life as well and we follow two different main characters one who's lost her mum and her daughter and we also follow a guy called Takeshi who basically uh, who, who's got a daughter who's really young I think I can't remember how young she is I've got a terrible memory but she stopped speaking after her mum died so he's grieving over that as well so that it's kind of different types of grief I guess in a way but they sort of meet each other and form a friendship. I gave it four stars. I think it had the potential of becoming five star, but it didn't quite get there. I'm not exactly sure why it didn't quite get there. I think at some points it felt rather sort of boring and I didn't feel connected. For the first half, I didn't quite feel connected or really emotional about the story. Towards the end, I think I started to feel a little bit more second half was definitely better for me and that's what sort of saved it because at one point I was thinking of giving it three stars the second half definitely did save it and it became a little bit more like meaningful because the first half was a little bit like the, the characters felt a little bit lost which I guess makes sense whilst people are grieving over something she's obviously lost her mum and her daughter all in one go and she's like a single person who doesn't have family left pretty much which would be horrible and she would feel lost but I feel like for me to care about the character in the book I had to I would need to have a bit more I don't know I don't know what I'm trying to say but I just needed to to have a little bit more emotions towards it but it felt almost like dry, almost like the memories that she had weren't quite impactful enough for me. I don't know if there's something to do with the writing because I think it's a translated book anyway so I don't know whether some of that just got lost in translation or whatever but second half definitely did save it for me and I enjoyed it and I found it quite cute in a way but it deals a lot with grief that's literally if that's something that you don't enjoy in books or it triggers you in any way I wouldn't suggest reading this one because grief is a massive part of this book and it could be quite hard sometimes to read it but it was it was a good book and I really did enjoy it my second read of the year was actually a DNF so it was The Waiter by Matthias Elf Fal I, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that I'm so sorry but it is a small book and the premise sounded really good so originally I had that prompt for, let me just tell you, it was supposed to be for astronomy and the book with two E's but 
I can, I think I've read like 25 pages and decided I was done with it. <laughs> that was probably the fastest I've ever DNF'd a book. But I bought this book ages ago, like three, maybe three, four years ago, thinking it was going to be like a cute contemporary novel set in this small cafe where the waiter is like watching everybody and maybe gets involved somehow or another in their stories. But it was purely so boring and I did not like the waiter, the main character. I did not like the atmosphere, it wasn't like a cutesy, cosy type thing that I thought it was going to be. It was kind of pointless and then I did read Goodreads reviews just to see whether it's worth continuing with it or not and to me it wasn't and a lot of people said the same thing that is, it's like there's no plot to it and what you'd expect it to be a cosy sort of thing it's not. It's just, I don't know. Is there's some sort of dry humour I guess and he's really like snobby the waiter and I just didn't see the point in reading something I was not going to enjoy so I just DNF'd it. So what I did instead for that same challenge is A Pocket Full of Rye by Agatha Christie and I enjoyed it a lot more. I did give it three stars only. I just feel like every time I read an Agatha Christie book it's always a three star. I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is because it's like a, um, I guess in a way, cosy, cosy mystery. It's a bit like a classic one, obviously, but for some reason it's never quite enough for me. I don't love, love them. So I don't know if in the future I'll probably pick up something else by the author, but I just read, I don't know, one book in a few years and I've read like three or four books by the author and I didn't give any of them higher than three stars. So I don't know. We follow Rex, the main character, who is just enjoying his morning cup of tea and then he suddenly dies. Everyone suspects his wife, thinking she's poisoned the tea or some breakfast or something, but then she's also dead. It is a Miss Marple novel so she will come to play at some point. I was just like slightly disappointed in it because I feel like the things that are actually mentioned in the blurb happened much later in the book so I kind of got spoiled by the blurb which doesn't make sense I've said half of it to you now but I don't know I just feel like it's a bit stupid to put such it's basically a description of the book not gonna lie it was cozy and Miss Marple also didn't play that much of a part in the book so I don't really understand why it's called Miss Marple novel I was just a bit disappointed with it, but again, I don't have high expectations every time I read an Agatha Christie novel. It wasn't anything special, it wasn't anything mind-blowing. Um, it was cosy, there was a lot of talk about tea and stuff. And it was interesting to follow the stories of different people in the house, because obviously all of them after that started to be suspects and whatnot. So it was interesting to think who it could be, but I don't know, I gave it three stars. My next read wasn't actually for a readathon, but that's something I started in March before, but I finished in April, and that is Highly Sensitive People in an Insensitive World by Isle Sand. And it's a small non-fiction book about highly sensitive people, it's like definition of who they are, what they are like, their traits and different things and some sort of tips on how to survive in the real insensitive world. It was a surface level book which is, I knew that it was going to be that, although when I did order it I thought it was going to be a bit bigger so anyway but it was good for what it was. I've learned quite a few things about it and it was interesting, definitely interesting but it wasn't anything like mind-blowing or too informative is just it did what it had to do and it's a really basic level so I'm sort of pleased with it. I did give it three stars because like I said surface level I didn't really get too much out of it but I did get information about it but it, it was interesting. Next book I read was for demonology and that I read Nevermore by um, Jessica Townsend and this was a reread for me and honestly on reread I enjoyed it so much more than I did the first time round. First time I listened to the audiobook and I think that was a completely audiobook's fault that I didn't quite enjoy the book. I think last time I gave it three stars, this time I've given it four stars and I actually want to carry on with the series. This time I found it so much more whimsical, so much more magical. There are so many different things in this society, so imaginative, so atmospheric and I just enjoyed everything so much more about it 
And now, like I said, I really do want to carry on with the series. I I got excited throughout some bits. It was just good. I th I'm pretty sure everybody knows what it's about. It's about a girl, girl called Morgan Crow who's supposed to die on her 11th birthday, but because she's a cursed child, <laughs> child, but she is whisked away by Jupiter North and she's about to enter the Wondrous Society, but for that she has to go through different trials and stuff like that. So like I said, really, really enjoyed it, gave it four stars. Next book helped me go through Animal Studies and I had An Elephant in the Garden by Marco, Michael Mopogo for this one. And I gave this book three stars. Again, Michael Mopogo, I always enjoy his books, but they're never anything spe spectacular to me. I know I'm gonna have a good time with it, but forget soon after. They're just not exactly impactful for me. So I gave it three stars. I'll read you what this one is about. Germany, 1945. Elizabeth, Carly and their mother are in Dresden when the Allied bombs begin to fall. Their home destroyed, they must flee the ruined city through the perilous, snow-covered landscape, all the while avoiding the Russian troops who are drawing ever closer. It would be hard enough to do without an elephant to look after. So, yeah, it's like a World War II story, quite wholesome as usual. But I only gave it three stars. My next one was also a DNF, so I had two DNFs this month. But that was Mr. Cadmus by Peter Ackroyd, which I originally had for inscription, I believe, yeah. But I didn't have to, like I said, it's a really gorgeous cover. <laughs> and I think that was quite honestly the reason why I bought it. But this one is about um, well, there's like two people, one lives on this house, an older lady, and there's another lady living on the other ha in the other house, and there's this house that was vacant, but now there's Mr. Cadmus, who's this mysterious foreign neighbour with a parrot, and it's basically about that. So the first, like, 20 pages, <laughs> I laughed so much. I think it's got really, like, black humour, and the things that were described in the book I was just reading like, what the hell is going on? It, w it literally made me laugh out loud because of the absurdity of the things that were happening but it's really like some really black humour and I was enjoying it for that reason because I was just so like, what the hell? <laughs> it was kind of, it was really funny in that way but then it went, it sort of calmed down and became boring and at that point I was like, what am I doing? I, I'm not enjoying this so then I read Goodreads reviews and people said it's just gone into a completely different direction. It sort of lost the plot, quite literally. And they were disappointed with the ending, they were disappointed with the middle because it's just gone, it's like the book completely lost where it was going, what it was doing, what it's about, and it lost all of its charm, all of its black humour and everything. So I just DNF'd it and it's a shame and it's another small book but I just couldn't waste my time with a book that I wasn't enjoying at all I just didn't have the patience for it so I DNF this one too which is a shame like I said it's probably the most gorgeous cover I own and I don't want to get rid of it because it's so pretty so I'm probably gonna need to stay on my shelf without me reading it and so for that one to actually finish inscription I had to choose a different book and the challenge was to read a book from my top shelf so I had to quickly choose a shortish book and I chose The Ghost of Rose Hill by R.M. Romero which does look like a big book but it's written in like, it's a poem but without a rhyme so it was a really quick read and I loved the Doormaker of Krakow by this author. I absolutely loved it. This one I did give four stars. It wasn't as great, but it was still very, very atmospheric. It was a really like, I would say even gothic story. So we've got this girl who likes to play violin and she goes to live in the, where is she living? Staying in Prague with her aunt. And there she finds an old cemetery that she starts to take care of and she finds a ghost of a boy there and there's also another character who has no shadow and he has become fascinated with her and the music that she plays and there's this mysterious story about like who he is and he might have some bad intentions towards her and the boy so it was like I said a really really interesting book I did really enjoy it uh, the reason I gave it four stars uh, is because it didn't quite hit me too hard and 
I think because of how it was written as well, it did sort of put me off, even though it was a really quick read. I think I read it within like three days, maybe. It was a nearly 400 page book. To me, it's quite quick, all right. So I only was reading that in the evening for an hour or or so every day. Yeah, so I did enjoy it, I gave it four stars and it got me through the challenge. Then for my next challenge, which shape shapeshifting should have been the Thursday Murder Club, but I started to run out of time at that time and realized I wouldn't be able to finish it because there were quite a few days that I wasn't reading anything, wasn't in the mood for reading. So what I did instead is pick up a really short audiobook, which was In the Mouth of the Wolf by Michael Mopago again. And I gave that one actually four stars, which might be a little bit generous thinking back on it, but it was a really cute story. It was like an hour and a half long audiobook. And again, it was like during World War II, it was a story of an old man who lost his twin in the war. And he's basically reflecting on his story of how it all happened, how he, I think how he met his wife, how basically, yeah, reflecting upon his life story. And it was interesting. It was really, it was one of the best ones I think I read by him. So I gave it four stars, but I think upon reflection, it might be like a 3.5, maybe three stars. And then for the last subject, which was alchemy, I was supposed to have read Magisterium, The Iron Trial, but I didn't quite get there as well, because again, I started to run out of time. And I didn't want to rush this book because it's another reread and I'm enjoying it a bit more this time than I was reading it the first time. So I don't want to rush it. I'd rather really read it when I want to read it and enjoy it a lot more that way. So I'm not like DNFing it or anything. And I still would like to read The Thursday Murder Club, by the way. Hopefully I'll get to it in May because I'm still in the mood for it. But again, because I was running out of time, I had to pick up a different book. And for that, I actually picked up a graphic novel, which is very unlike me. But I just went on my Kindle and picked up a graphic novel that would have a metal in it. And it happened to be The Silver Eyes, which is a part of the trilogy by Scott Cawthorn. I think how you pronounce that. It's based on a novel, but there's a bunch of them online. But there was a main trilogy that I actually ended up reading on the same day. So that was very unlike me because I never read trilogies, I never read series back to back, I never read graphic novels. Um, so I read three graphic novels in one day, which to me was really quite, quite a thing. So I gave the first two of them two stars, sorry, four stars, and the third one I gave three stars because it that one just went into a completely wrong different direction and the ending did confuse me and I wasn't the only one who got confused. I don't know if you read the full novel, if you would have understood what was going on a bit more, but I didn't. So I was just a bit confused and I still don't know what the hell, what, what the hell. But let me just describe it to you. Ten years after the horrific murders of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, they ripped their town apart. Charlie, whose father owned the restaurant, and her childhood friends reunite on the anniversary of the tragedy and find themselves at the old pizza place which had been locked up and abandoned for years. After they discover a way inside, they realise that things are not as they used to be. The four adult-sized animatronic mascots that once entertained patrons have changed. They now have a dark secret and a murderous agenda. I actually found it really quite atmospheric. So the first book, like I said, was The Silver Eyes, then there was The Twisted Ones and The Fourth Closet. So I had a really good time reading graphic novels all day, to be fair, and all of the illustrations were also quite atmospheric. I think they changed artists in every single one of them, so they were different from one to another. But still, I had a really good time with it, honestly, and I will be looking for a good graphic novels in the future, because I think the slightly creepy, horror -y type of thing might be the thing to go for me. It wasn't like too graphic in terms of, because there was a lot of blood and murder and all of that, but I don't think it was particularly graphic, so I think even children could potentially read that, I'm not too sure. I think it's from like the age of nine till whatever, but I had a really good time with it. But like I said, the ending was a little bit of a letdown. But I know there's a lot more spin-offs and different like sequels to it. 
I'm not going to carry on with it just because I was a bit angry with the ending that I didn't understand it. But honestly, I had such a great time. It was so atmospheric. I got so immersed in it. I had a great Sunday just reading that. So it was great. But yes, those are all of the books that I finished in the month of April. It was a great month and I had two DNFs, but that means those books are out of my TBR. So I'm so pleased. And the graphic novel experience was something new for me. So it was great. Anyway, please let me know in the comments if you've participated in the readathon, what you've read, and all of the things that you want to say about that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe if you haven't already and want to. Thank you for watching. Bye!